Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to look for the proper fuel pressure regulator and how to replace it in a late 1990s to mid 2000s GM vehicle with fuel injection as a return style fuel injection system. My example vehicle is a 2004 Chevrolet SSR with a 5.3 liter LM4 V8 engine. In the first section of this video, I'll use the AC Delco website to look at the proper part number for my 2004 Chevrolet SSR pickup, and I'll show you how that this same part is used in over 300 other GM vehicles, and it might apply to you as well. In the second part, I'll perform the installation. When I'm working on a GM vehicle, I'll go to the acdelco.com website, the part catalog, and use the search facility to look up the parts that are available from AC Delco for that particular vehicle. Now you put in the year, make, and model, and engine type, which I'm working on a 2004 Chevrolet SSR with a 5.3 liter V8, which is the LM4 version of the engine, which is in the 2003 and 2004 model years of that particular vehicle. And in here, there are different part categories and you, or groups and subgroups. So we're looking at fuel slash emissions and fuel injection. And then AC Delco original parts are listed here first. And here's the original equipment version of the fuel injection pressure regulator. But let's go look at the next page. We can see that there are AC Delco Gold and AC Delco Professional parts, and there's also an AC Delco Professional Fuel Pressure Regulator 217-3299. Now that is listed as 2004 to 2004, but if you look at the vehicle list, it actually applies to both 2003 and 2004. I like to use AC Delco Original Equipment if at all possible. So if we click on the picture, you get an expanded view, and there's the Fuel Pressure Regulator with the large o-ring and the small o-ring and then there's the clips that are used to hold that into the fuel rail that's the one used on the ssr and this other one is not used on the ssr but may be used in your particular application now the other thing here is the vehicle list you get to see that this same fuel pressure regulator is used in 324 applications of various gm vehicles early 2000s to mid 2000s and some late 1990 vehicles and in the case of Chevrolet, there's 165 various makes and models that this applies to. You can see 96 to 2005. And then if we scroll down to the SSR, we can see the 2003 and 2004 model years with a 5.3 liter V8 engine. And the 2005 and 6 aren't listed because they have a different styles for the LS2 6 liter engine. So if your vehicle is in this list, this video should apply to you. So now let's get into the video that shows you how to install it on your vehicle. I'm going to be replacing the fuel pressure regulator, which is right here on the fuel rail of this 2004 Chevrolet SSR. It has a 5.3 liter LM4 version of the V8 engine, and it has a return style fuel system. And we can see that there's two lines here, and one for bringing fuel in, one for the return side of it. And the fuel pressure regulator is in between those two, and it adjusts the fuel pressure based on the amount of vacuum present in the intake manifold. This connection is up to the intake manifold just off camera here. And at idle, the vacuum is at its highest point and that causes the fuel pressure regulator to receive the vacuum and it pulls against the diaphragm that's in the fuel pressure regulator against the spring that's in it. And that causes additional fuel or fuel to go through the bypass here back to the return, thus decreasing the fuel pressure in the system because at idle, not as much fuel pressure is required by the fuel injectors. And then as you, you know, hit the accelerator pedal and in increase the RPMs of the engine, the vacuum decreases in the intake manifold. Vacuum applied here is reduced and the spring action is not overcome and it allows the diaphragm to go back to its normal position when fully seated with the spring tension. And that causes the fuel pressure actually to go up. So as the vacuum goes down, the fuel pressure goes up because the bypass that's created here in the fuel pressure regulator is basically closed off and the fuel pressure is elevated by that fact. And the higher pressure in the fuel system is required above idle to properly maintain the flow of gas through the injectors into the engine. So what I'm trying to do here today is I want to confirm that I'm not leaking in here because there's a couple different types of failures that can occur here. Is you can have an internal diaphragm failure and you'll see that by pulling off the vacuum line and you'll have gas present or while you're running it you might see it percolate out and uh, i've confirmed that that's not happening in this particular case but the other reason i'm replacing this is i'm chasing a fuel pressure or slightly low fuel pressure issue which i believe to be the fuel pump based on some of my other tests but since i have the part here i thought i'd create the video to show you how to do it it's fairly straightforward and I pulled some wires out of the way here. 
wiring harness for the injectors I pulled down with this bungee cord and I've taken the coil pack connector out of the way altogether that was kind of blocked the view. So in that case what we're going to do is we're going to at least again look at the vacuum line here and see that there's no fuel evidence here whatsoever and I confirmed this while the engine is running as well and right now I've confirmed that the fuel pressure in the rail is at zero. I've connected a fuel pressure gauge over on the Schrader port over on the passenger side of the engine and right now there is zero fuel pressure. It's been sitting overnight so I've bled off to zero. And so we've confirmed that. I have a rag underneath here to catch any fuel because there will be some fuel present in the fuel rail and that will drain out here so you want to catch that. Wear protective gloves. I have protective eyewear on as well. So let's move this out of the way. You don't want to get too bendy with this because this plastic portion of the vacuum line is somewhat fragile. But the thing that holds the fuel pressure regulator in place here is this clip ring, a clip that goes around it. And there's two tabs on the fuel rail side of it. It looks like uh, actually three tabs that it catches on. And then the metal ring around the fuel pressure regulator itself is what uh, holds those together. There are two O-rings. There's a large O-ring, which I'll show you when I get the new one out, and a small O-ring. So make sure you get both of those out if they don't come out, because the little O-ring loves to stay inside the fuel rail, and a lot of people will try to jam the new fuel pressure regulator with the new O-ring, and it just won't work. So what we're going to try to do here is remove this one. See if I can get in through the lights and camera here to take this off. See if I can do it with one or not. Inside. The other side. And the clip is off. Often the new regulator will come with it if it's an AC Delco, which is what I'm using. But the uh, aftermarket ones may not come with that. And notice that the larger portion that goes behind the fuel rail tabs is this round section here. So remember the orientation. Don't try to do it in this manner needs to go in this manner because the smaller portion has to go around the metal ring of the fuel pressure regulator itself. And now this is where the gasoline might start flowing out a little bit. So make sure you have a suitable rag that you can catch that and properly dispose of afterwards. And you begin to walk it out gently, a little circular motion there. And it should walk out fairly easy. And there's a, in this case, a blue large O-ring. Once you get to that point, and bring that out, you're going to start bringing some fuel out, so make sure your rag's in place. And there's the fuel pressure regulator. Get it in view there. And here's the large O-ring I was mentioning, but notice the little O-ring is not here. And also part, part of this is also stayed inside, so we need to bring that out carefully. So I'm going to set this off to the side. And since gasoline fumes are present, make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area. You have some fans going here, and it's a nice, cool environment. But air is not by an ignition source. And I'm going to take a plastic or nylon pick tool here, and I'm going to try to bring this out. I don't want to scratch anything, but this is part of the... Let's get the more aggressive side here. That's where the fuel comes. There's the plastic portion. And notice we still don't have the O-ring. So I'm gonna grab, there's the O-ring right there. Let's get a little more light on that if you can't see it. Right in the middle there, that gray O-ring is sitting right there. So again, this shouldn't scratch anything. I've seen metal picks and other things used to be careful. You don't wanna create a scratch or something in here to get this O-ring out. And there we go, we have the O-ring out. Now I'm going to look in here for any obvious signs of contamination or particles or anything. I don't see anything, I just see gasoline. So in that case, I'm going to proceed with the installation of the new pressure regulator. Here's the new pressure regulator that I sourced. Two one, AC Delco 217-3073 or GM 1924-5530. And in here you can see the new regulator with the plastic screen. And notice it's offset, I usually like to line that up. 
so that the holes are fully exposed. And then the O-ring is there, so we've got two O-rings. And it comes with a clip, and then the retention clip that we actually have. So this one on the SSR is not used, but this one actually is. So this one is a nice extra piece you don't need to use. The other thing you want to be aware of is these gaskets are not necessarily, they're not lubricated, so you might want to dab just a little bit of oil, unused oil on them to lubricate them. So that they go in smoothly. And it, you put this in as a unit. So we see the large blue O-ring and the black O-ring and I've got the screen holes lined up. So just wiggle it in and it should press all the way in. All the way down to where this metal ring is adjacent to the fuel rail side and that's all the way in. And then we're going to take the new ring, retention ring, and again the round portions towards the back and the way that uh, goes on like this. Again we're trying to capture these tabs along with the front ring on the pressure regulator itself. You should just snap on like that and confirm that the metal tab of the clip is in front of the pressure regulator and the back portion is behind the tab. It's behind the tab, behind the tab. And the remaining part is simply plugging in the vacuum line. So with that, we have the pressure regulator replaced. It's fairly straightforward, very quick. The part will range, depending if you buy the AC Delco version, which I have here, uh, between $58 and $100, depending where you buy it. Uh, so make sure that you check where you're buying it, because you don't want to pay a... I don't see why these are $100 at this point in time, but... That's what the cost is at this point, between 58 and 100. I paid 58 plus shipping. So with that, I've got that, uh, I've got that in place. Let's get our rag out of the way. Let's make sure we make it nice and dry. So we can check for leaks. And let's move the gas uh, loaded rag here off to a safe area. Now I'm going to uh, get the ignition key and turn on the fuel pump. So we should see it pressurized, at least to confirm that we're not running uh, with any leaks here. But actually, I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to put it back to its natural running position here. Reconnecting these wiring harnesses so we can start the engine. So everything's back in place there. I don't see any leaks at this point in time, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the key and we're gonna start the engine. First we'll do the priming of the fuel pump. I'm now going to turn the ignition to the on run position to get the initial priming of the fuel pump to get fuel pressure on the rail to check for leaks. Okay, we have Pressure applied. I'm going to use my inspection mirror here to confirm that we have no leaks underneath. The underside is dry. There's no presence of fuel. And we don't have any blowing out the uh, diaphragm vacuum side here, so that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and start the engine and see if we can get fuel yeah, pressure gauges there. So that was with a three second prime. Of course, there's a slight amount of bleed off, which is what I was seeing before. I was trying to make sure that the fuel pressure regulator itself was not the source of that. And since we have two pressure regulators in place, or the first one and this one, 
it uh, is likely to either to be the natural bleed off on the injectors or the check check valve system on the fuel pump side not holding at all. A slight bleed off is okay. It's not a dramatic bleed off, but it's it's not holding quite as much as I would hope. Let's do the startup. Check your environment. Make sure you're good. No tools will fall into anything important. We're good. This is the, you probably can't see it very well. The fuel pressure I was seeing before at idle, 46 to 48. And if you pull the vacuum line off, what you should see is the bus seven to eight pound uh, PSI jump in the fuel pressure. And you do. And let's do that again. See, the vacuum line's on, vacuum applied to the diaphragm, so some of the fuel pressure is being diverted back to the return side of the, of the tank. And vacuum line off. And we're up at, looks like 56. And then at idle, we're between 46 and 48, which is what I was seeing before. After that initial run, shut the engine off, go ahead and check for any fuel leaks, make sure nothing's coming out where the Fuel pressure regulator presses into the fuel rail. You can pull that uh, vacuum line back off, make sure it's nice and dry like it should be. If it is, uh, go ahead and take the vehicle on a short test drive, let the vehicle get up to normal operating temperature, and then make sure that it's behaving correctly, there's no leaks. And then again, pull that vacuum line off, make sure there's no fuel present in there. If everything's nice and dry like it should be, you can go ahead and reinstall any decorative covers that you might have on the top of the engine. Well, that concludes the installation steps for this fuel injection pressure regulator for this 2004 Chevrolet SSR with a 5.3 liter LM4 V8. As you saw in the beginning of the video, there's a large number of vehicles this fuel pressure regulator was used in. So hopefully this video is helpful to you. If it was, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, it's free, and make sure you hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload new videos to the channel. Thanks for watching this Retro Car Guy 530 LLC video, and I'll see you in the next one.